This video is supported by Brilliant.org. Elon Musk recently tweeted that the purpose of the new next-gen Tesla Roadster was to beat gas sports cars on every performance metric by far, no exceptions, thus transferring the halo crown effect gas cars have as the top speed leaders over to pure electric. Well, being who I am, I had to look into the data behind this, and so that's what we're gonna do today. Before we get into the details here, I thought it made sense to take a look at some of the different performance categories that we typically measure cars by so that we understand the meaning behind them and kind of how they're calculated. Now, the first thing to note is that all of these numbers that we talk about in terms of power are the peak numbers. It's actually a point in time where this number is at its highest, not the overall, not the average, not any of the more advanced ways we typically would measure something, but peak number. And this is kind of standard how the automotive industry has been looking at these things forever. Now, some of these numbers can be manipulated. Things like gear ratios, weight of the vehicle, and a lot of other little factors in how the cars are engineered can kind of inflate or deflate some of these numbers. But when it comes down to it, the time trials, the zero to 60s, the zero to 100s, the quarter mile time, that is where the rubber meets the road quite literally. So we'll talk about the performance stuff and then we'll talk about the actual results. First up, we have torque. Now, torque is force at a distance. You add more distance, you get more torque. So it's subject to manipulation. Now, there is a difference between engine torque and wheel torque as well. Sometimes you hear manufacturers quote the wheel torque, which is kind of a meaningless number unless you know the horsepower or the RPM at which that torque was measured. And when we talk about torque, we use the term pound feet, that is the unit of measure. And that may seem odd, but what it literally means is that the torque, which is technically a twisting force, is measuring the amount of turning force applied to move one pound a distance of one foot around an axis at a radius of one foot. So it seems confusing, but it's a really old term, and the idea was to measure how kind of strong the twisting force is, which then propels the car forward by turning the axle where the wheels are. Now, of course, it's much more complicated than that, but I think it's not gonna matter once we get into the actual results of how fast these cars really are. So the next category we look at typically when it comes to cars performance is horsepower. Now, horsepower is kind of what it sounds like. It was originally coined by Thomas Savory in 1702 when he was referring to the amount of work a horse can do as a method to measure power. This combined with the torque of the car and depending on things like the vehicle weight and gear ratio represent the overall power. So if a car has 1000 horsepower and 500 pound feet of torque, it will be faster than a car with 500 horsepower and 1000 pound feet of torque, assuming all the other factors remain the same. Now, Jason Fenske over at Engineering Explained has a ton of videos breaking all these things down. So I'll link to a playlist that I've used to actually research this stuff and learn a lot about it. And as well as some of the ways that he looks at things and calculating a lot of these numbers, specifically for the Tesla Roadster that we're looking at today. Okay, so those are the two basic things we look at when we're talking about the performance of a vehicle, horsepower and torque. Now, the ways we really measure that are top speed and time trials, zero to 60 miles per hour, zero to 100 miles per hour, and the quarter mile time. There are some other ones, but those are the most popular ones that you'll find online. So what I thought we would do is we would take a look at all the top cars in those categories and see how they stack up to the Tesla Next Gen Roadster. First, we have the Tesla Roadster, and this is the new version, not the original one, which is actually the first car the company made. This is an upcoming all-electric, battery-powered, four-seater sports car made by Tesla. The Tesla Roadster was unveiled in 2017 along with the semi-truck as sort of a surprise announcement in very dramatic Tesla Elon Musk fashion. 
Pre-orders of the Next Gen Roadster began at that event in Fremont, California. Now there's also a Founder Series, which we're not gonna look at today because we don't have the specs on it. However, Elon and other reports have said that it will actually beat all of the specs that we're gonna look at today. Now that one is $250,000 and they're only making a thousand of them. The next car on our list is the Bugatti Chiron. The Bugatti Chiron is a mid-engined two-seater sports car developed and manufactured in Molsheim, France by Bugatti as the successor to the Veyron. The Chiron was first shown at the Geneva Motor Show on March 1st of 2016. The car is based on the Bugatti Vision Gran Turismo concept car. Bugatti started making these in 2016 and they limited up to 500 and then they began making them again in 2018 for the Chiron Sport. This is a two-door coupe with an eight-liter quad-turbocharged W16 engine, seven-speed dual-clutch transmission, and a curb weight of 4,400 pounds. The next car on our list is the Porsche 918 Spyder. The Porsche 918 Spyder is a mid-engined plug-in hybrid sports car manufactured by German automobile manufacturer Porsche. The Spyder is powered by a naturally aspirated 4.6-liter V8 engine with an additional two electric motors helping it reach some staggering performance numbers. It also includes a 6.8 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack that delivers an all electric range of 12 miles or about 19 kilometers. Porsche started selling this in 2013 and ended it in 2015 making exactly 918 units. It is a two door roadster and also has a seven speed dual clutch transmission. And the last car in our showdown here is the Dodge Challenger SRT Demon. This is the more powerful wide body version of the Challenger. It debuted in the New York Auto Show in April of 2017. The Demon uses an all new 6.2 liter V8 engine equipped with 2.7 liter supercharger, which puts out some insane numbers that we'll take a look at here in a minute. Now this is the cheapest car, which makes it really difficult to choose which one of these cars will be your next one. So for the first category, let's take a look at horsepower. Coming in with an insane amount is the new Tesla Roadster at 1,400 horsepower. Now the Bugatti Chiron comes in with the impressive 1,500, the Porsche 918 Spyder with 887, and the Dodge Demon with 840. But remember, horsepower isn't the only thing that leads to quick and fast vehicles. So here we have the Bugatti Chiron with the winner of this one category. Next, we have torque. Now this is one where these two numbers combined really tell the story of how fast this car is gonna be and how well it's gonna perform. You have the Tesla Roadster, which has an estimated 7,000 pound feet of torque, which is an absolutely ridiculous number because we don't have the true details behind this. Tesla only lists 10,000 Newton meters of torque, which is the wheel torque. So using some other assumed values, Jason over at Engineering Explained calculated that the engine torque would be 7,000 pound feet. Of course, we'll have to see. Now the Bugatti Chiron has 1180, again, a crazy number. The Porsche 918 Spyder 944 and the Dodge Dodge Demon 770. So the winner in this category is the Tesla Roadster, hands down. Now, when it comes to an actual time trial, a zero to 60 is a popular measure. So the Tesla Roadster lists it at 1.9 seconds, which is questionable whether or not they can actually do it. Now I've personally ridden in it and we've done this, but it's hard to say how consistent that would be. Now the other cars here, the Bugatti Chiron comes in at 2.3 the Porsche 918 Spyder at 2.2 and is the current quickest to zero to 60 in the world of any production car. And then the Dodge Demon comes in at a extremely close 2.3 seconds. So the Tesla Roadster does win out, but until we actually see it in real life, it's a question of exactly how quick it's gonna be. And again, they've also stated that the Founder Series version will beat these numbers. So we'll see what those look like down the road. The next test I wanna look at is the zero to 100 test. And this one I think is important because once you hit 60, some cars may kind of top out and they lose a lot of their power and start to, start to slow down. Well here at 100 miles per hour, this is where things get a little bit more interesting. Now, the Tesla Roadster reports at 4.2 seconds, the Chiron at 4.8, the Porsche 918 Spyder at an abysmal six seconds, 
and the Dodge Demon at a 5.1. So really kind of spread here from 4.2 to six. That's a big amount when you're talking about fractions of a second. But again, the Tesla Roadster wins out. Now let's take a look at the quarter mile, the typical drag race that you might see out in the wild somewhere. The Tesla Roadster reports 8.8 .8 seconds, which is crazy fast. The Bugatti Chiron is at a 9.4, which is abysmally slow compared to 8.8, .8, because remember, we're talking fractions of a second here. Next, you have the Porsche 918 Spider at 9.8 .8, and the Dodge Demon at a staggering 9.65, and I'll explain why that is in a second. So the Tesla Roadster wins out here by a healthy margin. So far, what we've been talking about is how quick a car is. How quickly can it get to 60 miles per hour? How quickly can it get to a quarter mile of distance? How quickly can it get to 100 miles per hour? When you hear people talk about how fast a car is, this is the thing that they're generally talking about is the speed. Now Tesla hasn't officially stated what the top speed will be, only that it will be above 250 miles per hour, which many of us will never go. Then we have the Bugatti Chiron, which is the current world record holder at 261 miles per hour, the Porsche 918 Spider at 211, and the Dodge Demon at a paltry 168 miles per hour, again, faster than many of us will ever travel in a vehicle. So in this one, I'm giving it to the Bugatti Chiron until we hear exactly how fast the Tesla Roadster is gonna go. Now, technically this isn't a performance metric, but I thought it was important to talk about the price because there was such a disparity between the vehicles we're looking at here. First, you have the Tesla Roadster, which comes in at a cool $200,000. This is the basic model, not the Founder Series, which is $250,000, but compared to the Bugatti Chiron at $3 million, it is a steal. Similarly, the Porsche 918 Spyder is at $1.7 million, so the Tesla Roadster is still doing and looking great from a price standpoint. And remember, the Bugatti Chiron and the Porsche 918 Spyder are no longer in production, so the value of these cars is only going to continue to rise as collector's items. Now, the Dodge Demon is a really interesting one because the retail price is around $86,000 before taxes and everything, but dealers upcharge and people are reselling them and they're not generally available. I actually went and tried to see on the Dodge website if I could go order one and it wasn't really possible. So it appears that the average price, and I'm kind of lowballing this here, is $100,000 for this vehicle. It, it could be well over that if you're looking to buy one with maybe some additional specs or anything like that. But in our category here, this is by far the winner at $100,000. The final tally is we had the Tesla Roadster winning four out of the seven categories, the Bugatti Chiron winning two of them, the Porsche 918 Spider, while it is currently the world record holder in the zero to 60 time, it doesn't actually win any of these categories. And the Dodge Demon with the price of being only $100,000 comes out surprisingly with a win here. So the next gen Tesla Roadster does beat gas cars in every single category so far. We'll see what those look like once it actually gets released. But as of now, it is winning hands down against the top cars in the world. So let me know what you think about that down in the comments. Do you think that when the Roadster actually comes out, it will blow these numbers out of the water? Or do you think that the Founder Series will even beat these without the SpaceX options package, which says it's gonna have 10 rockets. Don't know if it counts anymore as like a production car at that point. But anyways, if you'd like to learn more about how to do these things, how I was able to parse this data and come up with these answers and I do these kind of analytical things, I would recommend going and checking out brilliant.org. Brilliant is a really great site that helps you learn math and logic and solve all these kind of problems in really fun and interactive ways. I actually spend quite a bit of time here and love their machine learning track, which has a lot of different statistical methods and analytical ways of looking at data, which is essentially how really complex systems that are based on machine learning work. So I have quite a bit of fun working with this and I hope you guys do too. If you're interested in learning more, you can go to brilliant.org slash Teslanomics and the first 200 people get 20% off. So thanks for watching this and don't forget, when you free the data, your mind will follow. I'll see you guys back here next time.